The North. Known for its industry, hard-working and innovative people, we are the engineers of the past and always look for solutions for the future. Our Creative North wants to celebrate that and show the world what we can do. Welcome to Our Creative North, the show that celebrates the creative and digital media sector right here in the north of England. Now this month is all about exporting and we've been trying to get you, our creative industries, going abroad. So let's have a recap on what happened last week. So a recap of last week for our special on exporting. We talked to Mr. Simon Crosby. We also visited Blue Kangaroo and had a good natter with Jason Knight. And we got the greatest minds in exporting history together to talk about our creative industries in a focus group. Group. So there we have it. We've got some fantastic businesses and some great minds that are going to help you export. This week we visited the Explore Export event at the Sage Gateshead. Let's find out what happened there. So we went along to the Sage to the Explore Export event. I'm Julie Underwood, uh, Director of International Trade at the North East Chamber of Commerce. And today we're at this fabulous venue, the Sage, and we've got the launch of the Exporting is Great campaign and running alongside that, Explore Export. Well, today we're really trying to put exporting on the agenda. Um, the Exporting is Great campaign, it's a national government backed campaign. It's been launched today with a series of, of advertisements that have gone live over national TV. And the big headline message is we need a trillion more exports by 2020 and 100,000 new exporters. And this whole campaign is to support that initiative, working with key partners and key organisations. Now, running alongside that, we have Explore Export. Now, this is a fantastic opportunity for businesses in the North East to come and meet representatives from other countries, other markets. So today, we have representatives from approximately 70 countries. So companies are coming along. They're arranging one-to-one -one meetings, so if you think they can talk to eight people from eight different companies without leaving the Sage. So it was a really fantastic opportunity. And there's approximately about 220 people here today. So it really is a collective of companies and also the strong support network in the North East that we can offer to exporters. And the North East does fantastically well regarding um, exporting. We are the only region that has a consistent and um, positive balance of trade which is really important and um, Lord Maud gave a uh, speech this morning when he highlighted that the rest of the UK need to meet that but we need to play our part as well in getting new companies exporting but when you think nationally 11% of companies export which is lower than our, our neighbours such as France and Germany so we need to increase that because that ultimately increases economic growth and prosperity so it is a big ambition and uh, we just need to ensure that we can work with companies that through the campaign and what we already do through the NECC and through UKTI services that we can support companies access markets and also present opportunities. I think that one of the key elements is that companies can actually see that there's opportunities in specific markets that are relevant to them. I've certainly experienced um, as I've worked within the support export support arena that even some of our language perhaps we don't use I've used exporting you know, throughout this um, this interview, but I think we perhaps need to look at trading internationally because people do think of exporting as product, whereas obviously within the creative industries, that's different. So I think our approach really needs to be in the language of the business, and hence why working with Creative North, working having a focus group, we can perhaps learn from that how we need to present our offer, our proposition that is more relevant to the creative sector. Perfect result for me is to meet companies at events during the week, export week or whenever and say, Julie, what a fantastic event. I had eight appointments. I've got several things that I can follow up. I know who, who I need to speak to in Brazil or Spain or Abu Dhabi and they've got real value from it. And then hopefully we can help them with that journey, with those contacts to when they actually get orders. But there's companies here who we already work with, but and they recognise the importance of the fact that you can come here and you can speak to all those people in one day. So that the perfect thing for me is we know about the event we attended and it was great. We didn't just talk to Julie Underwood, we also talked to a few people attending the event. It's been a really good event, a great turnout, it was a great start this morning uh, with Lord Morden's appearance uh, and uh, yeah, it's gone really well, it's good footfall and I'm sure the commercial offices are quite busy upstairs. 
so today uh, there are lots and lots of uh, representatives from uh, consular staff and such like from um, all around the world um, and lots of one-to-one -one meetings going on and seminars about exporting to other countries and just uh, I suppose uh, one giant learning event uh, for people around the northeast and businesses in the northeast. Well today I've been ex uh, exhibiting with the uh, northeast chamber of commerce the national trade team so a lot of our members are here today a lot of people walking around looking for bits of information on how to export and we kind of do the nuts and bolts so we do the bit after you've won business uh, so we look after our members from a point of view of what the customers want to know how do you satisfy them and how do you get paid yeah we don't have um, a physical product that we send overseas and sell um, we're selling methodology we're selling ideas and we're selling systems and processes um, and so for us I, I suppose a, a really major part of that is making it tangible uh, and getting people to understand the, the real benefits of it very very quickly And now to our business of the week. Concentrating still on exporting, we went along to Hedgehog Labs, a technology consultancy company based right here in Newcastle. I'm Ray, Ray Clark, I'm design director here at Hedgehog Lab. I'm Salat Pedregla, I'm working at Hedgehog Lab and I'm the CEO. I'm Mark Forster, um, I work at Hedgehog Lab and I'm the um, chief operating officer. Originally it was just the two of us, we, we set up as a kind of primarily as a, as a, um, a product company. Within the space of kind of six months, we, we started getting into to do client work. I think it was about three year in, we really had to kind of decide to focus our efforts on client paying work because it was, it, it, there were a lot of clients, a lot of our clients saying, hey look, we've, we really need kind of good development. We just define ourselves as a global technology consultancy and we focus primarily on mobile devices obviously, but we do more than that. We work on connected devices, we work we, we basically design and build software um, on anything from a mobile phone to a desktop computer to, to a web-based system um, to, to hardware like connected devices and wearables. We work directly with the clients to understand what their end customers and users want from the from the product. A lot of clients come to us with preconceived ideas of what their product could and should be, but it's until we really strip it down and talk to their end users and customers, and then we really find out what the product could and should be. I think it, it was probably only a few years back that we really focused our um, kind of approach to what we do and the clients we wanted to work with and the, the way we, we kind of sold our skills and, and that really I think became a kind of a, a driver for focusing where we want to grow and, and, and kind of um, helping us to grow the way we did and that, at that point it was we could really look at um, a, a real kind of growth strategy. And, and shaping our business around that. All the designs done here in the UK and in the Newcastle office, we work closely with our colleagues in London and Boston with clients who are based uh, in the US and uh, we do a lot of work in London on site in the office we've got there. We have seven or eight designers here in the Newcastle office so we can, we can fit in a lot of design projects globally. We've got a good strong team here in the UK that handles that. It's Exporting is pretty significant for our business. We started inadvertently without even trying, um, you know, getting export business, you know, in the last couple of years. Um, and when we started looking at it, we thought because of the kind of work we do, which is digital consultancy, we don't need to, because we're not exporting physical products, we're exporting services, we don't need to be in these places to deliver what our customers need because we can work over the internet, uh, we can communicate over Skype, video conferencing, audio conferencing. So when we started really investing in exporting, right now about 30% of our revenue comes from exporting. I would say a lot of design company and agencies offerings aren't the same. I think the biggest thing to, to get straight uh, when, when you're looking to work with a company like us, whether it's from an export angle or a UK-based UK angle, is really understanding what's involved. There's a lot of process and a lot of planning, a lot of project management goes on behind the, behind the scenes on any digital project. And that's kind of not seen on the app store and it's not held in the, in the customer's hand. It's all kind of in the background. And that goes to make up, I'd say, about 80% of the finished product. So it's that understanding of what they're going to get, their involvement. We need a lot of time from them. We, know, we need a lot of tie-in from them. It's not a case that they're just going to push the project at us. We need a full 
a full uh, contribution from them that made the product, the product and the project a success. We were starting to get queries just to word of mouth and the quality of work we were doing from abroad, um, from clients in the US. I mean, we worked with clients right away from Shanghai to San Francisco, you know, that's literally spanning the globe. Um, and we started getting queries and we did a bit of small projects for clients in the US. Um, and then we, when we started delving deeper, we found that, especially, you know, in Western Europe and, and in America, and actually globally, there was a real, real need, demand supply was skewed in terms of people wanting good companies that can do what we do, which is mobile and connected devices. There's only very few companies that do things as well as we do. And also because of word of mouth, people were starting to hear the kind of things we were doing. So that's how we ended up getting into exporting really. We knew that there was demand for our services. We had people contacting us from these export regions. And then we decided, you know, we need to invest in this seriously. After the break, we head right over to RMT Accountant and Square One Lord. Some of you may or may not know that our offices are based right next to the Sage Gate said, and it was really interesting to see the UKTI tour bus coming over and seeing all these different nationalities and people from all over the world coming to the Sage Gate said to find out a little bit more about UK markets. And one thing that does frustrate me is the fact there wasn't enough creative and digital media companies there. We have a fantastic region for creative and digital media and we should be celebrating it. There is no reason why international companies don't come to us first to access the UK market. But hopefully we're going to start changing your mindset and we've got some top tips from r and accountants and Square One Law Next to give you the best advice to get your business started in exporting. So first up, we go straight on to our top tips from r and accountants based right in Cramlington. I'm Stephen Slater, I'm Commercial Services Director at r and Accountants and Business Advisors. Well, we're a firm of chartered accountants and we've been around for over 60 years. We provide a wide range of services to businesses of all sizes, um, predominantly in the northeast, but we've got clients all over the place, we've got clients all over the country, and we've got international clients. Predominantly I tend to work with a lot of businesses that are um, sort of sub five million, between about half a million and, and five million turnover where they uh, need sort of extra support at a sort of financial director type level and support them through that, uh, through, through the various financial requirements that they need. So if you're thinking about exporting or selling abroad, here are some tips for you. Tip number one, make sure that you understand the VAT rules to do with the country that you're selling to. So if you're selling from the UK to an EU country, then make sure you understand what your obligations are in the UK for reporting what you're selling into the EU. Tip two, if you're selling abroad, then you need to consider the currency that you're selling in. If you're selling in UK sterling, then you're not risking yourself to exchange rate fluctuations. Tip three, if you're selling abroad, then you need to consider whether withholding tax is going to play a part in what you're doing. Withholding tax is where overseas governments uh, put rules in place that mean overseas companies um, would have to deduct tax for net from any payments that they make make to you. Tip four, permanent establishments. Now, when you start to trade with overseas countries, if you have somebody on the ground and have, a, have a, a, a fixed place of business, then you might be creating what's called a permanent establishment. If you do create a permanent establishment in those countries, you may be required to register that permanent establishment as a branch, for example, in that, in that country. What you then may be exposed to is paying corporation tax on profits in that country. Another consideration, which is the next tip, tip five, is whether that should be perhaps uh, a subsidiary, a separate company, uh, a, another legal entity that you've created in that foreign country that is owned by the UK company. Tip six, if you're employing local people in a particular country, so people who are native to that, that particular country, you need to understand what the local tax and social security rules are. And this can have quite a profound impact because in some countries, especially some in the EU, um, their, their taxes that are similar to national insurance in our country can be three times higher than what we pay here in the UK. So that can have a 
a, a material impact on margins and profits that you might be making. Tip seven, if you're sending UK staff abroad to work abroad, then you need to under, help them to understand what the tax treatment is on the money that they earn, because that can be very different from what they earn in the UK. Tip eight, if you are deciding to set up a uh, separate entity, a separate limited company to trade in that foreign country, then make sure you talk to your accountant about any anti-avoidance rules that might be in place that could, could impact on you. Tip nine, talk to UKTI. You need to have a relationship with UKTI if you're going to be um, selling abroad or considering selling abroad because there's so much support that they can give you around understanding uh, new markets and opportunities that might exist in those new markets. So always talk to UKTI as part of your plan. Tip 10, make sure you engage with the right professional advisors who can support you in your exporting uh, campaign. Um, make sure that your accountants and your lawyers are conversant with exporting and the rules and the regulations that you need to be aware of. And additionally, you know, make sure that they have relationships with other trusted professional advisors in those foreign countries where they can help you understand the local rules that are in those countries very, very quickly. And now to the solicitors. No, he's not that unpleasant. It's Square One Law, a modern office based in an old building. My name is Ian Murray. I work for Square One Law, a senior associate specialising in commercial contracts. Square One Law is a, a relatively new commercial law firm. We act for businesses. We also act for um, individuals, high net worth individuals. And we're business owners primarily, so you know, we, we cover the full range of commercial services um, from buying and selling businesses, um, obtaining additional finance, um, putting in place the, the commercial contracts, dealing with the employees, dealing with any disputes that the business um, should get involved with, and in addition, dealing with the personal um, financial situation of the directors and managers and, and, and all. So, you want to start exporting, well I have 10 tips for you. Tip 1, ensure that the person or persons that you're dealing with are people that you trust um, and have confidence in, whether that is the customers that you're selling to or the um, people who are helping you to deliver what you're delivering. Tip 2, use the resources which are available to you in this country, in particular UKTI is an absolutely invaluable resource. They have a big promotion on at the moment in relation to exporting, um, which anyone who uses LinkedIn will no doubt have seen. Tip three, talk to other businesses who've already done this, who've uh, been there, done it, got the t-shirt. Um, if you want to know which businesses you should talk to or want introductions, then again, UKTI could probably do that. Similarly, um, organised networks such as the Chamber of Commerce or any sector networks that you're a member of. Tip four, decide early on what your route to market is going to be. Are you going to sell through um, resellers such as agents, distributors? Are you going to use a fixer in country to help you um, achieve what you want to achieve? Are you going to go as far as setting up your own establishment in the country, a branch office or something like that? Because Deciding how you're going to sell will inform uh, all of your subsequent decisions about um, achieving your goals. Tip five, take legal advice at the earliest opportunity and get the strongest contract that you can in order to protect your position. Tip six, protect your intellectual property and confidential information. Um, as a creative or digital business that is that is the value that you are providing to your customers and if someone else is taking that value and selling it and not giving you any money then that's not the best result for you. Tip 7. Be aware that contractual protection, particularly in relation to intellectual property and confidential information, isn't a perfect solution. It isn't a guarantee that no one will try and take what you have and use it for their own ends. Tip number eight, choose English law and English courts um, wherever you can. So in your contract, you can specify 
the law which will apply to this contract is English law and any dispute in relation to, that, to this contract will be decided by the English courts. Tip 9. Be aware that trying to choose English law in English courts, much like trying to protect intellectual property and confidential information, isn't a perfect solution. It won't work all the time. There are some countries which won't um, enforce that term of the contract, so potentially the person you're dealing with could seek to play at home and have their own uh, laws uh, applied to the contract. And equally, in relation to, to most countries, there will be mandatory laws which you have to comply with anyway. Things like consumer protection um, and competition law. Tip number 10, be aware and have a look into the regulatory and tax type issues that you're going to face when you're trading into a certain country. Um, there will be things like import controls in certain countries. Certain countries are subject to international sanctions. Uh, there might well be export controls in relation to what you can export from the UK to certain countries. Now over to Rob to finish us off. There we have it, another episode of Our Creative North. And as you can probably tell, we are very determined to get you guys thinking about exporting. Now, you may not think it's right for you, or you might be inspired by the advice and tips that we've been giving you. Either way, we'd love for you to join us at an event that we're having on the 24th in our offices based in Gateshead. The details are at the bottom of the screen below now, and hopefully we can get as many of you there as possible to get you start talking about exporting and what it can do to help grow your business, and most importantly, how we can work together to grow this fantastic region. We'll see you next week.